Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of The Hard Truth. Thank you so much for watching. You know, I really appreciate you guys. You're awesome. You're the best. Um, I want to talk to you today about the prosecution's case. I mean, we've all discovered that it's not as strong as we thought it was in the beginning in January. And so the prosecution still has a couple of cards that they can play. And if they do, they can be very, very devastating to the defense, even with all that we've heard and all that can be proven and all they can't. I'm telling you, we need to talk about these. All right. And so if you want to know what two moves the prosecution can make right now, that would be very significant. Grab that coffee or a nice cup of tea as we begin our story. The only way a killer or killers could come to King Road and commit a quadruple homicide without leaving any blood evidence is if they stopped and washed their hands, face changed their clothes. They had to do some things in order to pull this off. But the way that the PCA words Dylan's encounter with this person that could have been a killer it's very subtle and so i'm afraid that the way they have it structured in the pca dylan's statement may actually be the prosecution's ace in the hole according to the affidavit it says that dylan a man, a male walked past DM as she stood in a frozen, shocked phase. The male walked towards the back sliding glass door. DM locked herself in her room. After seeing the male, DM did not state that she recognized the male. This leads investigators to believe that the murderer left the scene. First of all, somebody in a COVID mask. There's no reason to be in a frozen shock phase, all right? I guess they're saying because she heard all of this crying and other stuff that that's what made her afraid. But that's really not going to wash, okay? You saw somebody, it says she did not, it said DM did not state that she recognized the male. This makes me feel like later on, they left the door open for DM to come back and say that, the person in the courtroom, Brian Koberger, is who she saw. She didn't state that she recognized the male, but she didn't state that she didn't recognize him either. So they left the door open for her to be able to say in the courtroom, hey, that's the guy I saw, you know, I'm pretty sure, blah, blah, blah. And if that's the case, and there's rumors of DNA, you know, that could bury Brian Koberger. Regardless of all the evidence that's not, um, adding up or whatever, it still does not uh, give the defense a foolproof way out. I mean, there's possibilities that this case is going to be thrown out on technicalities, but at the same time, if it doesn't and it goes to the point where we have people on the stand testifying, there's nothing to stop Dylan from saying she, uh, she recognized for ID and Brian Koberger. Another thing that concerns me is that the prosecution also could pull out the murder weapon card. Uh, they can claim that they all of a sudden found a murder weapon and it has Brian Kohlberger's DNA. I think that if they get desperate enough, they would do it. And somebody might say, now that's far-fetched. Well, if you ask me, the sheep was, was far-fetched. They claim they found the sheep, so why won't they claim that they found the knife? All right, they're already setting us up to believe it has to be a K-Bar knife. It just has to be a K-Bar knife to the exclusion of every knife ever made. Okay, and so to me, that's setting us up 
to one day wake up and read, oh, they found a K-Bar knife and it was in this guy's apartment and this guy knows Brian Koberger. Okay, if they play that card, that's gonna be hard. <laughs> that's gonna be a hard one to to get around. That's gonna be a. I mean, and I mean, why wouldn't they do it? They they claim they claim they found the sheath, and a lot of people don't believe they found the sheath. Do you believe they found the sheath, or do you believe the sheath was planted? What do you believe? I'm not talking about what you're listening to every day. What do you believe? What is your gut telling you? about that knife sheath <laughs> what is your gut telling you about a knife sheath being wedged between uh, a murder victim and her blanket on her bed after the fact and only one speck of dna from somebody is found on it and his dna is nowhere else in the room okay what is your gut telling you we need to take a poll i'm gonna make a survey tonight all right, but the point of the matter is, I believe the defense need to prepare, they need to prepare an answer to the possibility that the prosecution may claim that they found a K-bar knife as, you know, they may not just directly say it's Brian's, but they may say, you know, the person that bought it knows Brian. They may find somebody that knows Brian and went to school with Brian. And, and and that person might say, okay, they you know, it's my knife, and yeah, I knew Brian, and that's all they would need for everybody to run to the races. Oh, it's over. You know, we told you he was guilty, you know. That's that's what it would be. All right, so we've got two cards here that the prosecution can play. And I'm asking you what you think about both of them. What do you think about um Dylan? giving a 100% positive ID of Koberger in the trial. And what do you think about the possibility of the defense, uh, no, the prosecution saying, hey, we found a murder weapon. Okay, I would be hilarious. I mean, it wouldn't be funny. This is a serious case. You know, people lost their lives. There's a, a person's life at stake here, uh, Koberger. And so I'm not making light of it, but I'm just saying, after all that the prosecution has pulled up until now, nothing would surprise me. And even though I would be appalled, I would probably have a smile on my face because I would be like, I knew these guys would dig this up, you know. All right. What do you think? Let me know. Happy Saturday night. Much love. Signing off.